Hello and welcome. This is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for September 11th, 2023. This is the time of the week where we get to get together to talk all about all things CircuitPython. I'm Scott and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of, mic of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday, which are often on Mondays. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We will also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the at CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a notes document to accompany the meeting and recording. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. Uh, for example, if there was an in the weeds topic that you wanted to hear. The meeting tends to run 45 to 60 minutes, and after each meeting, we post the link to the next meeting's notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discords. Uh, check the pinned messages to find the latest notes stock so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates and in the weeds uh, in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. The first is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a chosen set of items from our Python on microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. This is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers separate from our status updates. The third part is hug reports. Hug reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The fourth is status updates. Status updates is an opportunity to report what we've been up to. Take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week. The fifth and final part is in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. That how covers how the meeting will go. And I will get started with community news after I take a time code. So uh, the first item here, uh, so community news is a preview, or not a preview, uh, a, a subsection or a, I guess a preview of the microcontroller Python for Python on hardware newsletter that goes out uh, around the same time as this meeting. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but first let's talk about the highlights from it. So first, uh, CircuitPython 8.25 has been released. It's the latest bug fix revision of CircuitPython and its stable release. Uh, notable changes included updated TLS root certificates, tuning of the RGB matrix, and new and updated boards. And spoiler alert, expect 8.26 soon, I believe, as well. Uh, next, we have uh, Pimeroni, mi Pimeroni MicroPython has released one two, version 1.2.5. Uh, so this is uh, version 1.2.5 of Pimeroni's fork of MicroPython provides glorious vector visuals. Uh, this release introduces a beta of Pico Vector, a library that sits atop Pico Graphics and supplies anti-aliased vector drawing tools using Pretty Poly. Pico Vector is currently available in the following builds for Pico, Pico W, Pico Lipo, and Tufty 2040. Um, it includes support for all right fonts, allowing you to convert almost any TTF or OTF font into a simplified vector format, a sequence of overlapping polygonal contours, which can be used in Pico graphics projects. Version 1.2.4 from August 4th added PNG file support as a better option uh, than JPEG. So check those out. Next up, uh, using Conda for microcontroller embedded development environment. Developing for an embedded target can mean using a certain version of code compiler, debugger, and other tools. The challenge gets bigger if working with multiple different tool chains and environments. Conda is a package, dependency, and environment management tool. 
While it is heavily used for Python and data science development, it is surprisingly working very well to set up and manage environments for embedded development. Conda is, a great, uh, is great for managing non-Python dependencies and setups. And this is a link from MCU on Eclipse. Uh, last up, we have an IoT survey. Uh, and I'll type it in my time code. Uh, Blues, an Internet Things a provider, uh, has completed an interesting poll on the Internet of Things and microcontrollers. What specifically drew my attention is where folks typically get news about embedded slash IoT development. Hackaday, Hackster, and the Adafruit blog make up 40% of the IoT information folks ingest. All right, and last up, some details about the newsletter. Uh, the CircuitPython weekly newsletter is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Monday. The complete archives are available at www.adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news or project, edit next week's draft on GitHub um, or submit a pull request to that. Uh, and submit a pull request with your changes. You may also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And with that, let's go on to the next section. The next section is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. Uh, this is a statistical overview of the different subcomponents of the CircuitPython project uh, meant to ground us in some numbers. So overall, um, we had 28 pull requests merged from 16 different authors. GFGH, JJK looks new to me. Um, SC Bin looks new to me. Uh, Tertharajina, uh, JR0328, uh, R. Rakola, and Harry Wepner are all new names in terms of the authors. We had six reviewers, so thank you to all of our reviewers. And we had uh, 19, so that's pull requests. And then issue-wise overall, we had 19 closed issues by eight people and 19 opened by 14 people. Uh, so we're net zero uh, in terms of new issues and we're also um, hitting the double digits for participation on issues, which is great. So next up, I will read the core stats. Uh, we had 15 pull requests merged into the core. Um, with three different reviewers. We have 21 open pull requests, so we're nicely under that kind of 25 one-page mark, which is great. Uh, Issue-wise for the core, we had eight closed by five people and 13 open by nine people, so uh, we're at net up a few again, uh, which is pretty typical for the core. Uh, we have 710 open issues overall. Um, we track uh, Adafruit-funded prioritization through milestones, um, and we have 14 open issues on 8.2.x, and we have 53 open issues for 9.0. Um, and then a bunch of them are in long term, and we have one that's not assigned a milestone. So uh, we, the not assigned a milestone ones are considered uh, in the need of triage, so we'll have to take a look at those. And that's the state of the core. Let me hand it over to Katni for the libraries. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. This section covers all of our CircuitPython libraries, which includes the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries and the community libraries. Across all of those, we had six pull requests merged from five different authors and three reviewers. Uh, we had, leaving us with 46 open pull requests. We had seven closed issues by two people and three open by three people, leaving uh, 636 open issues. 19 of those are labeled good first issue. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more. Um, you can take a look at the list of open issues, the list of open pull requests, figure out uh, what works best for you. In terms of library PyPI download stats this week, um, over 313 libraries, we had 71,856 downloads on PyPI and the top 10 are listed in the notes. In terms of library updates in the last seven days, we had one new library, Adafruit Circuit Python JSON Stream, and three updated libraries, which I will not read off. And that's where we are with the libraries. Thank you, Katni, for the library update. 
Uh, next, let's go to Melissa for an update on Blinka. Uh, Blinka is our uh, Circ Python compatibility library for um, for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And uh, this week we this actually covers uh, Blinka plus uh, any of the related repositories. This week we had seven pull requests merged by three authors and two reviewers. There are currently four open pull requests. Um, there were four closed issues by two people and three open by three people, uh, leaving a net of 102 open issues. There were there were one th or eleven thousand seven hundred and sixty six PyPI downloads in the last week and eight thousand two hundred seventy four PyWheels downloads in the last month and we are now at one hundred twenty one boards. And that's it. Thanks, Melissa. All right. Uh, next up, we're moving on to a new section which is called Hug Reports. This is a chance for it us to highlight and say thank you to folks in our community for doing awesome things. It's both great to just recognize people and also reinforce what we value. So I'm uh, actually going to hand it off to Katni before I go as well. I had to scoop myself, so <laughs> I figured uh, going first would make things easier on everybody else. Yep. Um, so the first thing I want to give is a group hug. Uh, I am scooping my status update. Um, my last day with Adafruit is September 22nd. That's two weeks from, uh, or one week from Friday. Um, I uh, have made this change. It's it's uh, an important step for me. Um, it's very good. Congratulations are in order um, if you are concerned about that. Um, but I wanted to give a group hug. This community has been so amazing uh, from the very beginning. And it's what drew me to Adafruit, it's what drew me to the community in general. And I greatly appreciate it because without you folks, I would not be where I am today. Um, so thank you so much. And uh, remember that, you know, this community is made up of you and you are what makes it great. Um, I will do more specific thanks next week, I guess, uh, makes more sense. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you and uh, I wish you all, I wish you all the best. Um, you'll hear this all again next week, I'm sure. But uh, that's uh, that's my hug report. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, Katni. All right, uh, I put you. At, it's pretty obvious now. I think why I scooted you in front of me as well. Uh, but uh, I'll I'll go out of order as well. Katni, uh, thank you so much for growing Circuit Python and its community. You've just been a vital part of it since you've come on. Uh, and I'm sorry to see you go, but I am excited to see what you do next. Um, so thank you for, for everything. Um, also, thanks to Dan for wrangling uh, the 8.2x fixes and their release. So let's go to Dan. Okay. So uh, thank you, Kathy. I'll say more next week, I think, uh, because I didn't have time to write something up given the reordering here. <laughs> um, but thank you for everything, everything. Um, any, in the long, usual course of things, thanks to Liz who discovered a new problem with certificates post the 825 release. It's very specific to a particular set of certificates and there'll be an 826 to fix that. And thanks to Phil B, Tank Your Dragon, who's working on proto matter fixes, which have to do the matrix portals. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Uh, and sorry for the last minute reorder. <laughs> um, okay, so I've got notes from DJ Devon 3. So um, DJ Devon 3 says, uh, Hug report to Lady Ada for the desk of Lady Ada less on using OpenAI to write display init sequence. Hug to Smitka on Discord for figuring out a way to animate bitmaps with .bin files. And a hug to Dan H and the team for fixing the SSL handshake bug. Confirmed to fix it in the 8.2.5 release. Great job to all the dev devs involved with the SSL update for 8.2.5. And next up is Foamy Guy. All right. Thank you, Scott. Um, I have a group hug this week as well for everybody. A uh, hug report for Michael Pocusa for some collaborative programming work we did over the weekend on a templating engine that runs in CircuitPython. 
uh, and uh, Hug Report as well for uh, Katni. Thanks for all your contributions and growing and helping to shape the community and getting so many folks uh, involved, myself included. So thanks. All right. Uh, next up is Jeff. Hello, I'll start with a group hug, and then I'd like to thank Dan for the bug fix release and a whole bunch of sleuthing around the um, server security certificate thing. And to paint, dragon, paint your dragon, Phil B, for continuing to work on some protomatter bug fixes. It's been a little bit of an iterative process uh, with both of these uh, things I just mentioned. And um, I, you know, both of these will get to the finish line and then it will be wonderful. Uh, Katni, thank you for being one of the key people who brought me into this community. And um, although you shared a little bit with me privately, I just look forward to hearing more about what you're doing next. And um, DJ Devin 3, your bracket uh, print looks great. I made a much more minimal and fragile one, and I would print yours if I was assembling a group of panels ever again. And that's what I've got for today. All right, thanks, Jepler. Next up is Liz. Hello. A uh, hug report to Dan for the certific certificate fix, um, very fast and speedy. Uh, and then hug report to Scott for adding the JSON stream library to the bundle. Um, both of those things are um, involved at a project I'm working on, so really appreciate it. I will say more next week to Katni, but congratulations, Katni, and uh, group hug. All right. Thank you, Liz. Next up is Melissa. Hello. Um... So I want to give a hug to Dan uh, for fixing the circuitpython.org boards. Uh, a hug to Katni for everything you've done and all the people you've helped, you've helped out, including myself, and a group hug to everyone else. All right. Thanks, Melissa. And now I've got uh, two folks with notes to round out. Um, so first up, uh, Michael Pacusa says, a hug report to Foamy Guy for pair programming session regarding templating engine and for merging the PR for H Adafruit HTTP server. And next after that, uh, from Toddbot, we have a hug to Clever in Helpless CircuitPython for reminding me about PicoTool to save entire state of RP2040 based projects. And that's it for hug reports. Thank you, everyone. Uh, next up, let's go to status updates. Uh, status updates is a chance for us to, it's also a round robin where we should talk briefly about what we've been working on in the past week and what we're working on in the coming week. Uh, it's great for uh, knowing who to collaborate with and uh, give tips and tricks if somebody's working on something that you've worked on previously. So I will start and then we'll go through the list as in uh, the notes doc. So, uh, I'm continuing work on the ESP IDF5 kconfig update. Uh, I showed it on my stream on Friday. Uh, I did, after my stream, wrote a script to regenerate them for all boards. It's very convenient, and I probably should have done it sooner. Um, and I have at least one bug to fix on ESP32. After the kconfig is updated, I'm hoping all the boards build, and then uh, we'll smoke test a few of them uh, to make sure that they're not completely broken. Uh, I'll probably do a little more office organization when I need a coding break. Uh, over the weekend, I moved in a couch and a rug, so hopefully the echo isn't quite as bad. I also have an AC sitting next to me, which I've turned off for the meeting, but is uh, definitely keeping the office cooler. Um, I also wrote up last week on Thursday uh, an Adafruit Playground page, which is kind of a like thing we're testing out, um, but you'll hear more about in the future. Uh, about the custom uh, cardboard storage boxes that I had made for storing uh, flat things, in particular uh, dev kit. So check that out if you're looking for a dev kit storage solution uh, that's not going to break the bank. And with that, let's go to Dan. Hey, so um, last week I updated the root certificates that are used for ESP uh, expressive boards and the Pico W, and that fixed some things, uh, particularly talking to GitHub and some other sites. It turns out that we took away a certificate that was expired, and that expired certificate is actually needed for sites that uh, use Let's Encrypt. Um, Let's Encrypt has this extremely tricky way of um, its root certificate. Um, root certificate that it uses, it uses a modified version of the root certificate to handle very old Android devices, 
that can't have their root certificates updated. So they had a clever way of doing this, but the SSL code that's used in Espressive doesn't do the right thing unless you include the expired certificate. It's not necessary on most things like in a browser or on, on a desktop computer. But uh, Liz discovered this problem and I did a lot of research on it and it's all written up in the Adafruit certificates uh, PR if you want to read it, but it's horribly gory, uh, gory details. So anyway, there'll be an 826 uh, soon to include that fix. Um, also, I've been helping um, Phil B work on some uh, RGB matrix protomatter fixes, and there may also be a fix for that, and um, that'll go into 826. It's kind of handling an edge case that is sort of like not permitted, but it's okay. Um, and then finally, uh, when I'm not doing those things, once I've been, uh, I've been working on the MicroPython v1.20 merge. I did the v1.19.1 merge, and that's well along. Uh, I still need to do the merges, uh, the merge conflicts that are in the core MicroPython interpreter runtime directory. And um, that'll be, uh, those are hard to think about. So, or they, they require a lot of work looking at. So I'll be working on that in the next week. Okay. Thanks, Dan. All right, now I'm gonna read some notes from DJ, DJ Devin 3 after I spend my brain power on typing a time code. Uh, okay, so for um, DJ Devin 3 uh, they say, I spent days on the ST7796S display driver in it, trying to flip bits so it would refresh in landscape mode. Followed Lady Ada's lead, I used OpenAI to correct the missing bit in the sequence, tested it, and it works great, refreshing top to bottom in landscape mode. Smitka on Discord used a method from GIF.io to directly blit bitmaps in sequence for full screen animated bitmaps. Each frame is, frame is a .bin file. I was able to create a full screen 480 by 320 animated BMP at 9 frames per second. From looking at it, you'd never be able to tell it's a sequ sequential BMP ease and not a GIF. Uh, purchase more matrix panels and a second PSU to add to my already six matrix panels. I wanted to see how many panels a single matrix portal S3 will drive. Six is already very nice and will suit my needs, but I'm hoping for nine or 12 panels. Designed and 3D printed a bracket for joining four by five millimeter pitch matrix panels. Already printed a couple of prototypes. Every pitch, two millimeter, three millimeter, four millimeter, has a slightly different design and each is physically different in size. The bracket I designed will only work on the five millimeter pitch panels to my knowledge. Next up is Foamy Guy. All right, thank you, Scott. Um... I took uh, off last week on Monday for the holiday, and uh, in the evenings I've been doing some other work for my other job, uh, migrating some servers, so I have not had too much time for CircuitPython in the past week or so. Uh, but I have gotten the bulk of those server migrations out of the way now, so I'm getting back to my normal schedule uh, this week, which is nice to get that stuff behind me for sure. Um, the bits of work that I did do on uh, CircuitPython was over the weekend, and it was some testing on the HTTP server uh, library PR that brought uh, several new features, including uh, easier support for cookies, additional types of redirects, and several other things. Uh, lots of good stuff in there. Um, I was also working this weekend on attempting to use this MicroPython library called uTemplate, uh, which I think is probably pronounced MicroTemplate. Um, it, I worked on that on the stream on Saturday. I did have some success, but it uh, requires some elaborate sort of boilerplate code because it's kind of built from the ground up to operate on files for inputs and outputs uh, rather than just strings, which is nice because it uh, saves RAM, but in the CircuitPython world, that's tricky because of the write protection that's enabled by default. Um, I was able to get it working with uh, string IO, uh, object that kind of acts like a file enough for it to be happy. Um, I do intend to test it a little bit further with an SD card. I think it might be uh, pretty good in that use case, but I still need to try it out. 
And then uh, kind of the, the continuation of that was working along with uh, Michael Pokusa on a new implementation for templating, this time that is built uh, to operate on strings that stay in memory, which makes it easier to use with stock CircuitPython uh, if you don't have the external storage. Uh, and then the uh, stuff that is unrelated to that that I've been getting into today so far is uh, testing and submitting a patch that fix an issue with Read the Docs theme, uh, specifically when it tries to build inside Read the Docs. And I have a bit more about that in the weeds to talk about later. And that's what I have got for now. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Foamy Guy. Next up, let's go to Jeff. There's that unmute button. So a belated hug report for Scott and Microdev. The IDF5 update is huge, and I can't wait for it to be ready. Uh, but on to status updates. Last week on Thursday, the dot clock display pull request was merged. Thank you to all who tested and supplied feedback. And I sketched out uh, support for IO expander support in the core. Um, but that brings us to this week. Um, we've kind of scaled back those ambitions um, and what uh, we're going to do instead is kind of the minimum thing that we need uh, for an upcoming product, which is the ability to have a spy-like bus that is located on an I2C port expander that we can use um, at boot time or after boot time to configure one of these dot clock displays. And there's like a whole bullet list of um, why the general IO expander concept, as I had it in my head, is problematic and it has to do basically with the fact that an I2C bus can be locked and we do things in the background and it turns into a sea of problems and if we can change the problem we're trying to solve so that it's smaller it becomes more tractable um, and then uh, something else coming up um, during most of October I'm going to be gone on a vacation um, so just a, a warning that in about three and a half weeks I'll go poof but I will be back and uh, yeah that's what I got Thanks, Jeff Boyer. Uh, enjoy your vacation for sure. All right, next up is Katni. Oh my gosh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, last week started the Metro M7 micro SD guide. Uh, that's the new Metro M7 with um, the micro SD slot on it. I know, surprise. Um, so that guide should be done by the end of the week. Uh, so if you picked up one of those, you'll find. Um, a bunch of circuit python demos and so on and so forth because it supports um only circuit python which is excellent um but there's no arduino support so that guide should be ready by by friday um and then as uh i mentioned earlier um since my last day is in two weeks i will be uh putting in a bit of time into the um offboarding process working with all the teams working with um the IT team to make sure that you know everything's good to go and um, going through that whole um, process and making sure that everything gets handed off. Um, if uh, you only have my Adafruit email, feel free to send me um, a DM and I can get you my personal email um, if you're interested. Um, otherwise, I will still be on Discord, so you're not going to uh, find me disappearing um, anytime soon. Um, but uh, that is going to be my next uh, really two weeks um, is making sure that everything is tied up and all the loose ends are taken care of and um, that everything is good to go. Um, and that's what I've got going on. All right. Thank you, Katni. All right. Next up is Liz. Hello. Uh, so I've been working on an ESPN API project using four 62 by 32 matrices. Uh, so it's monitoring five sports and leagues, uh, but I'm going to write the code so that folks will be able to easily customize what they want to monitor. Um, and I also wrote a Python script to pull down the team logos and convert them to 32 by 32 bitmaps with gamma correction for the matrix displays. Uh, and I'll include that script and instructions in the guide. And this saved me a lot of work that I would have done manually previously for other matrix projects and also gets around the question of how to distribute the logos without actually distributing them. Uh, since they're included in the JSON from the API, folks will be able to download them and use them that way. Uh, and I've also been writing some code for another prop maker project. Uh, this time it's a Halloween project with the Ruiz brothers. It uses prop maker feather along with a matrix feather wing. So uh, no matter what I've been working on, it's been a lot of matrix work. And that's what I've been working on. 
Awesome. Thanks, Liz. Excited to see the projects. Next up is Melissa. Hello. So last week I finished up updating the um, home assistant guides. Uh, this week I am start. I, I started going through the blink issues and uh, fixing and merging and closing the easier ones. And I'm this week I'm going to continue doing that. All right. Thanks, Melissa. And you were the last person in status updates. So we're going to move on to in the weeds. Um, in the Weeds is a chance for folks to ask any questions or us to have any discussion, maybe about things that came up, but uh, more often things that we like come up over during the week and that we want to cover or, or discuss in a public way. Um, so first up, I will just um, give the highlights of this first topic that has been since been resolved, thanks to folks on Discord. Uh, but uh, Tadba asked, uh, quote unquote, installer for CircuitPython projects. I have a CircuitPython application I need to install on hundreds of boards. The application consists of a bunch of library files in the CircuitPy slash lib and my application files in CircuitPy root. Has there been any effort to create an installer for CircuitPython projects that's more usable than unzip this zip after installing the CircuitPython UF2? Um, and the update, it says, never mind, looks like the Pico tool save-a foo.uf2 works well. So this is a way of um, copying the data uh, off of an, a Pico or an RP2040 so that you can copy it back on later. And that includes the file system. Uh, and then Jeff adds a note that says, a long time ago I wrote uh, github.com slash jepler slash make fat image for creating a fat file system image on a host computer. It's unmaintained. You could couple it with UF2 con convert to create a UF2 file of just the file system. Uh, and that will work uh, on devices where the file system area is writable for the UF2 bootloader. Um, all right. And then next up, uh, we have a, a topic from Foamy Guy. Yeah, thank you. I have, uh, this all pertains to uh, an issue that popped up in Read the Docs, um, specifically around the theme when it tries to build the docs over on their side inside of their, um, I guess, VMs or whatever it is. You don't really see the same issues as far as I can tell if you build it locally, but um, if you look back at the builds inside of their system, you can see that they're having trouble building on some of the libraries. So this was originally noticed and fixed uh, inside the core. Um, hug report to Jeff, I think, uh, fixed it there and pointed me to this. Thanks for that. I have done some testing in the libraries. I, I noticed a couple of weeks back we were having the same problem in the libraries, and I started doing this, but didn't quite get ready uh, to the point where I was confident in bringing it up and running it yet, but I am there uh, today so far, so that's good. Um, I tested this out in the test repo, and it appears that it's working there. Um, I put in a PR, I merged it, I let it do its build, and then I went and checked on uh, read the docs. I forget the exact URL, but the one where you can see all the builds to confirm that it was completing successfully. Uh, that one went well. And then I went and made a commit in a different library repo uh, just to get the change isolated by itself and make a patch file from it and submitted that into Adabot. Uh, but I wanted to uh, mention it here just to let folks um, know that it is potentially ready for some other folks to look at and uh, just to see if anybody had uh, any thoughts or suggestions around the, the patch files specifically. This was kind of the first time I've ever really generated one of those and it's the first time I'm using it with uh, with Adabot to do the to push the patch out so uh, I wanted to bring it up here and just see if uh, the thing that was created looked okay and just get that in front of the rest of the team and figure out uh, if it is looking okay what kind of timeline we want to actually run the patch on uh, afterwards so um, that I can take a look at it later today okay cool um it it's never seemed that complicated to me so i feel like um i feel like what you did is probably fine i haven't looked at it yet but i'll take a look um and then uh we can uh go ahead and get that merged and get that taken care of um good good catch i, I want to say as well um and thanks for thanks for looking into that and 
and getting the fix in. Um, but I can take a look later and we can uh, move on from there. Sounds good. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I was just commenting on the pull request, and it looks fine to me. And the specific thing that you were wondering about, the little parenthetical things, I'm guessing that is just a feature of a newer version of Git than it was used the last time we made a patch. And I kind of explained what I think that's doing. But I think it will be fine because it looks like the Git, the normal Git commands are used to create the patch file and to apply it. So it's kind of a G-I-G-O uh, situation, but it's not garbage in, garbage out. It's get in, get out. So <laughs> I think it'll be fine. Cool. All righty. Yep. Thank you. All right. And that's it for In the Weeds. I will wrap us up after I take one final time code. So this has been the CircuitPython Weekly for September 11th, 2023. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, uh, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter next week. Uh, visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. And... Just double checking our meeting. Um, this meeting is held on the Adafruit, or the next meeting will be held next Monday as usual at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. This meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord server, which you can join by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the at CircuitPythonisa's role on Discord. With that, we hope to see you all next week. Thank you all for attending and We'll see you on Discord.